Howdy folks and welcome to The Daily Coin. My name is Rory and today is Thursday, October the 29th, 2015. And I'm very pleased to be speaking with Derek Iwanaka, who is the Vice President of Investor Relations for First Mining Finance Corporation. And you may remember I interviewed the President, Patrick Donnelly, a couple of months ago uh, about uh, First Mining and we want to follow up with that. We're here at the um, New Orleans Investment Conference, and Derek has just given a great presentation on the properties that that the uh, company has acquired over the past few months and laid out the, some of their plans of their go forward, some of their go forward actions. And we just wanted to bring that to you guys. And we're going to get into a couple other things. But how are you doing today, Derek? Ah, uh, very fine, thanks. Uh, that's only my second presentation since starting with the company, so uh, I was a little bit nervous, but uh, got that over with, and uh, yeah, feeling pretty good. No, you did a great job. I mean, it was really, it was really well done, and the and the uh, question uh, session after afterwards, I thought you did, did a great job, and because some of the questions that that were thrown at you were pretty tough, and <laughs> they were yeah. They were... I, I... <laughs> I knew I was going to regret uh, inviting Mickey Fulp to the presentation, but that's okay. He brought up some good, uh, some good concerns. Well, I didn't want to I name hopefully names. Hopefully, I addressed them. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to name names, but <laughs> he was he he was kind of laying into you. But yeah. like I said, you did a, you did a great job, and and uh, just just as a reminder to you guys, uh, first mining what they're doing is first mining finance is they're acquiring properties that they're acquiring mines that are distressed. They're considering shutting down. They're not in production at this point, but they have, uh, they have metal in the ground. They know that they've got silver. They know that they've got gold and it's just a, it's just a question of getting it out of the ground before all of their money evaporates. And that's where first mining finance comes, comes in and they actually, uh, acquire the companies and then hold them and it's kind of like a, you and I were talking before in the way that I was describing it it's kind of like a like a, a house flipper for people to kind of understand and and but you're not doing any of the remodeling you're not doing any of the any of the work because all of that work has already been done you know that the gold is there you know that the silver is there it's just a question of how do we get the capital to get to, to get it to the next stage is that is that about right? Well, that's a pretty fair assessment. Okay, and as far as the, we know that Keith Newmeyer has has over the over the past few months has, or a few months ago he had asked for the primary silver miners to withhold some of their production. Mm -hmm. None of these mining operations that you have currently. They can't do that, can or can they? Well, the the mines that we're buying actually aren't in production, so we don't. They're not in production at all. Yeah. So there's nothing at all coming out of the ground. No. So, okay, and just give us an idea of of where first mining is headed right now and what you're doing. So, for the short term, anyways, uh, short term, say within the next year. Uh, the goal is to get up to 10 million ounces of gold in the mineral bank. So that's ounces in the ground. We're just going to hold on to them. They're nice and safe underground, so you don't have to worry about uh, holding them in a real vault. Um, and then uh, we want to get up to eventually 30 to 50 assets. So uh, okay. right now we're at we're going to be at 21 once these acquisitions close in uh, in November. And uh, we hopefully, yeah, over the next year or two, we'd like to get up to 30, possibly even 50 assets. Now, do you do you guys have any kind of timeline as far as how you're assessing the market? We know that the, these are distressed properties. We know everybody knows that the mining industry has just been beat to snot. I mean, there's there's yeah. there's no money out there for it. So it's what mm -hmm. you guys are doing is is filling a void, a much needed void, because mm -hmm. we're going to have to have production in the future. I mean, there's there's it's no secret that the gold and silver that's currently out of the ground that's in the retail market is evaporating. Mm -hmm. It's going away. 
So in order to, for that to be filled in the future, there's going to have to be mining operations. That's where you guys come in, right? And what what is your what is some of your analysis telling you as far as the properties that you're acquiring? Mm-hmm. And what kind of timelines are you guys looking at as far as, or is that even a fair question as far as where you see it going and, and how long do you see that transpiring? Well, we think that we are probably at or very close to the bottom of the market, but the market could keep on dragging on and uh, we want to keep on acquiring projects. So uh, we are trying to get up to 10 million ounces in the uh, short to midterm. Uh, 10 million ounces of gold or gold equivalent. Okay. Um, from there, we might start to get delve into some other assets. We might look in copper, zinc, lead, uh, platinum or palladium. Uh, if we can acquire those assets at reasonable prices, we want to start acquiring those as well so we can diversify ourselves and eventually be like a, kind of like an ETF uh, for mining companies. Okay. And um, somebody like, kind of like the uh, a private equity for the little guys, so to speak. And um, so over the next few years, that's kind of where we see ourselves evolving into. And eventually, uh, we do want to have uh, revenue generation coming out of some of these assets. So um, it might take more than a few years, but uh, say five to 10 years down the road is where we would see ourselves actually starting to either uh, get into these third party agreements, uh, start to generate revenue with either royalties or metal streams or um, a joint venture or earnings. So that's where we see ourselves going. During your presentation, you had you had talked about you guys only are only interested in acquiring properties that are in relatively safe neighborhoods like mm-hmm. Canada, United States, and Mexico, basically the Western Hemisphere. Yes. And how do you see, or do you see, any of the any of the geopolitical scenarios that are going on? elsewhere in the world how do you see that impacting what you guys are doing or the market as a whole Mm -hmm. Uh, for us we're not going to go into those jurisdictions where we're not wanted so we're not heading down to bolivia anytime soon Um, probably not going to go to brazil anytime soon we do like some areas well you know mexico we do like chile we do like uh, chile has a couple issues though Uh, water is becoming an issue and um, it is on a seismic area so there are earthquakes down there and that, that, I mean, that's where some of the largest copper mines in the world are producing. So um, they're seeing some issues down there. So, you know, we're going to try to stick to the Western hemisphere, but going down to South America, yes, Chile, Peru, uh, Colombia, and we'll see about Argentina. We'll see how the uh, votes pan out, but um, yeah, we might go down to Argentina as well. So you don't really see as far as what's going on in the Middle East or in, in Europe or Eastern Europe, Russia, China, you don't see any of any impact coming to the mining industry from any of what's going on there? Um, not from a geopolitical standpoint, but uh, from a demand standpoint, for sure. Uh, China is one of the biggest consumers of pretty much all metals, almost any input, uh, period. So yes. uh, we are very dependent on what happens to China. So if China slows down, and, and they have, that's exactly part of the reason why the metal prices have come down where they are. Um, but, um, you know, from my understanding, Russia is going to continue, or sorry, China is going to continue to grow. Uh, India is going to continue to grow. Yes. They want to have the Western lifestyle that we enjoy here. And, and so it's inevitable that they're going to move towards that direction. And they're going to have to consume metals to produce all these items that they want. Well, China and India both have these massive solar programs that mm-hmm. they are, that they've been embarked upon. China is about a year and a half to two years into their program and they're supposed to have a hundred gigawatts uh online or more wow. a minimum by mm-hmm. 2020 i mean that's not even, that's less than five years away yeah i don't know if that's even feasible I, I i used to work for a uranium mining company and so we were um you know producing the fuel potentially for nuclear reactors in uh in in china and uh, I know that their goal there was to increase their fleet from uh, around 27 uh, operating reactors, somewhere up to around 100 over the next 10 years. So yeah. um, that's where you can see huge uh, power generation is from nuclear power. When you talk about uh, solar panels, that you, you're talking about 
you know, millions of acres to uh, cover that type of ground that, that's going to be required to generate that type They're of They're talking about on rooftops. They're talking about mm. taking it to the taking okay. it to the, to the people and India mm. as well. Yep. That's where that's where a lot of it is is planned. We've okay. got it there. I've got a contact uh, named Jeff Brown mm -hmm. uh, in Beijing, and he is very well. He's he does a lot of research. He's he's an American citizen. He's now uh, living. He's been in China. He's been in Beijing for almost ten years. So he's he understands what's happening, and this is what this is information that's coming from him. He's done a lot of mm -hmm. research on on these programs. He's not as not as much on the India program as mm -hmm. China, but there's there it's going to be rooftop. Mm -hmm. I mean, so there's well, they're not doing Germany farms. is doing that already. Yeah, they are doing yeah. it. I mean, so I, I I see that impacting the the mining industry here. It's going to have to. I mean, it's going to because one of my favorite <laughs> questions, Derek, is where is it coming from mm -hmm. when you've got you've got mines in distress, you've got mines that are closing. Mm -hmm. These are operational mines. Your company is the pipeline to backfill those mines that are closing or that are just played out. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're either shutting down because they're not profitable or they're played out. Yep. And that's going on globally. Oh, yeah. Uh, mining operations today, unlike, say, 10 or 20 years ago, today most of them are on hedge. They're jacked up on debt, and they're starting to mine out lower-grade things. The, the, the low-hanging fruit is all gone now. All gone. You have to go to the remote areas, which is why they're going out into Siberia, which is why they're going out to Nunavut or Alaska, uh, tough areas to operate in, uh, Africa. Uh, you're going in all these exotic areas where uh, it's very difficult to produce this stuff. And, um, you know, that, that and then once you produce it, you got to get it to market. Exactly. Without, you know, something happening from the point you get it out of the ground to the refiner. I Correct. mean, so it's becoming difficult. Uh, the, 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 the supply is going to have to drop at some point. And uh, what they always say is for uh, the best cure for a low price is low price. And uh, eventually it's going to have to turn around. Uh, when mines start shutting down uh, and people keep on demanding their iPhones, their computers, um, TVs, that metal has to come outside. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's, the list know, goes on. The list goes on. I mean, yeah. it's just incredible. So once again, currently is what I'm looking at. Where is it coming from? I mean, because the you see it, you have to mm -hmm. see it because that's otherwise, otherwise first mining finance wouldn't exist. Yeah. Right now, I know a lot of the metals come from secondary supplies. So you're either crushing cars, you're getting rid of tin cans, you're recycling these metals. Um, but uh, a lot of that is still going to waste. And eventually, it's, or it gets put into some machine that's sitting on uh, top of the earth for, for you know decades. So that metal is going to have to replace from something else. And uh, so you have to eventually pump up the mining operation. And right now, there's barely no drilling going on. Right. Uh, exploration is, you know, virtually nil. Uh, and so at some point, there's going to be a supply crunch. If, if nobody's replacing the ounces that are being produced, if nobody's replacing the pounds that are being produced in the base metal sector, uh, at some point, if they keep on kicking this can down the road, at some point, there's going to be a crunch. And where is that metal going to come from? Well, we're going to be holding on to it. But if we'll say you get to the 30 companies that, that you're looking to, 30 companies aren't going to supply the world. No. I mean, we're, that's, we're, we that's, can't that's, save that's, the world, but no. we'll, we'll do our best. <laughs> but that's, that's yeah. my point. I mean, this is that, is, is that it, you know, something has to give. Yes. Something has to give. The low hanging fruit is gone. Mm -hmm. the, all, of the, all of the operations that are out there right now, because the prices have been suppressed for four plus years. Now, all of the high grade is all gone. So now they're they're as you just pointed out, they're going to the lower grade, mm -hmm. uh, deeper ore, mines, deeper mines, uh, deeper higher grade. Everything is just worse and worse, and worse and worse, and the costs just keep going up. Yes. So I mean, and and I understand, and I do appreciate and respect the low prices is the cure for low prices. Mm -hmm. 
when are we going to see it break? <laughs> uh, I know you don't have a crystal ball, yeah. and I'm not asking for I that. I wish I did. But uh, for us, I mean, we would like this to last for at least another year, possibly two. And then we'd like to see things probably start to turn around. I mean, uh, we don't want to keep on having an endless supply. So you, you do eventually want to see it stop. I, that question came up, I think, numerous times was how do you stop the dilution in your company? And so for us, I mean, we do want to get a very large uh, warehouse of, of, of product or, or assets. But, yeah, at some point you need to stop and start selling some of those assets. So yes. uh, we don't want it to last forever. And so, yeah, we see probably two, three years uh, before things start to turn around. And um, but when it turns around, uh, it turns around very quickly sometimes. And so if that's the case, you know, we're going to be in a good position. Do you do you see it uh, as a lot of people have said that it's going to be, you know, rather explosive to the upside? I mean, do you is that what your analysis is saying? Historically, or? yeah. And that, that's what happens is uh, I, I showed a chart today and uh, you can see those spikes can be very drastic on the upside and on the downside. Yes. And so um, if you see some big mines shut down. Uh, and you, you could see a really big spike in the metal prices. Okay. Well, that's what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm looking for. That's what you're looking for. That's what we're all looking for. But you just don't want it to happen right now. Not just yet. <laughs> not tomorrow, not next week, not next month. You know, maybe next year, but maybe at the end of next year. <laughs> well, see, and, and the thing is, is that uh, you guys out there that are listening to this, you need to take a cue from Derek because it, as they are acquiring more assets, we need to be acquiring more assets as well so that we are, you know, in a great position when things do turn around. They're going to have to. Nature says that. I mean, it's just, we just don't know when. But exactly. It, it will happen. Yeah. There's you know? no if. It's, it's when. Yes. It's not a question of if. Uh, but we've been speaking with Derek Iwananaka. Is that right? Uh, Iwanaka. Iwanaka. But Iwanaka is pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. No it's, problem. Uh, uh, and he's, he is the uh, Vice President of Investor Relations with First Mining Finance. And Derek, would certainly appreciate it. Thank appreciate you. all your time. And we'll do this again real soon. Thank you very much, Rory. Thanks for thank, having me. Thank you.